we've made a basic setup and um, we've got that going on, and falling, um, got them for living forever. I'm just going to turn off the gravity just so it's a bit more visually exciting. So they're going outwards like that. Um, one of the first things you probably want to do is you probably want to add a bit of colour. Makes it all look a bit more nicer and more interesting. These are colour changing over time, plus I've added um, some colour based on the speed of the particles as well. They sort of change colour slightly when they go faster, which is where this sort of whiteness is. Uh, let me stop that. So, looking at these, you see there are no colour settings by default on the particles. You have to sort of make your own. Um, I'm not sure why they're not placed in there by default. Probably just to keep it a bit more streamlined, but they're fairly easy to set up. So, what we do is under the source particles, additional properties. This is where we can add extra properties to our particle. And I'm going to add a colour one. So, if you right click that, you can go create node. And you can do set property. So I'm going to create a set property node. This is where we can define a new property. And I'm going to call that color. Spelt without the U in the sort of American way. Um, and color is three numbers, R, G, and B. So I need to change this value to have three numbers. So if I right click it and go value types, float, like that. Uh, if I rewind, there we go, they've all gone black. Now, I did a couple of tests with this and before, and it didn't work two times out, three times. Um, and it seemed to be that for some reason this one was not working. So I disconnected it and then I connected that, oops, and it was working. But when I deleted that one, it stopped working again. So if you do have that problem, where it doesn't show up, the colors changed. Just disconnect it from that one and try and put it on that one and see if that works. Um, it worked for me this time, but a couple of times it didn't. So I'm not 100% sure why it didn't. So we can see we now got all these black. Uh, and that's because our values are all set to zero by default. So zero is black. So zero, zero, zero will be black, and one, one, one is white. So any variation in between those will give you slightly pale yellows, makes those a bit pinky. If I turn all those off to black, these go all red. So you can control the colors here like that. So now when I do that, I'm just gonna do this. So obviously you don't necessarily want them all to be the same color, and we can change that by using a vary source property. So vary source. Oops. Uh, there. So if I just take that, plug that in there, plug that in there, get our property name, which is color. Put that in there. And again, we've got to change our values that are set to single floats. So if we just open up this, right click that one, float type, float three, or error, and that's because the min hasn't been set to the same thing. So we just do that. And now we'll be alright. So if I do one and one and one, hit rewind, see now we've got random colors, um, a bit like confetti. And if you wanted, you know, you need to all a bit more red, like that, you could do that sort of thing. So you can play around here and make them sort of different variants on that. Um, now, that's basic color setup. Um, I'm going to do, I think I'm going to do these separately, these videos. So the next one, I'll show you how to inherit the color from the object.